Before you toss out that next piece of garbage, consider this. That styrofoam cup could be your next polyester suit. Your soda bottle, new carpet in your living room. Milk jugs, playgrounds. Scientists all over the world are working on ways to reuse almost everything that we now and for the last hundreds of years really have routinely thrown away. But right now, we're only skimming the surface. Nine out of 10 tons of plastics discarded in the United States are not recycled. This is uneconomical and it is an ecological mistake. Which brings us to a most familiar question, paper or plastic? My name is Tom Nosker and I'm a plastic man. Dr. Nosker is the principal investigator of the Plastic Center at Rutgers University. Tom and his team of graduate students have developed a way to turn your old milk jugs and plastic hangers into building materials stronger than structural steel. I went to my PhD advisor and I told him that I was thinking about mixing different kinds of plastics that were immiscible together. And he said, oh, they're just gonna fall apart. His first hurdle, finding a way to mix plastics that don't mix, called immiscible polymers. That's sort of what we're most well known for pioneering. Ever notice those numbers in the chasing arrows on the bottom of your water bottle? Each number stands for a different kind of plastic polymer. Number one is polyethylene terephthalate. Clear water bottle. Number two bottles. is high density polyethylene. Polyethylene. Number three. A number four, four is low density polyethylene. polyethylene. Uh, number five is poly pro polyethylene. And then number seven is mixed resins. But having a number doesn't mean it's easily recycled. Most household recycling systems in the United States collect bottles number one and number two. What I have mostly focused on has been trying to figure out what to do with some of the plastic that has had limited value. But there's still the issue of compatibility. I thought that there was something wrong with thinking that you had to have chemical compatibility in order to get these things to bond well together and to make something useful. What Tom's done is find a way to build a normal looking bridge with a not so normal molecular structure. And this bridge is revolutionary because it's proving that two polymers are better than one. Here's a bottle uh, that's made from polyethylene. I can crush it, I can change the shape. It doesn't fracture, so it's strong, but it was easy to crush, so it's not stiff. And that's a problem. So you wouldn't want to make a bridge out of polyethylene because it would sag. Conversely, if we had polystyrene, it's very stiff. The problem that it's got is that it's brittle. It might fracture under the wrong circumstances. That's when the light bulb went on. And it turns out that if we blend those two polymers together, we can make something that's got in-between properties. The trick is how you get the different polymers to bond. We make our blends of immiscible polymers. By melt blending them, we've got special techniques that we used in order to get a very fine structure. Tom's patented technique involves a machine that melts and mixes plastics, called an extruder. Uh, this extruder here is a special single screw compounding extruder that's going to revolutionize uh, a number of plastic processes. This single screw design can mix plastics to the micro scale so the polymers can bond mechanically. If we mix it properly, we we can get an interlocking three-dimensional structure. We get mechanical bonding. In a mechanical bond, materials maintain their molecular structure and become linked to each other by forming interlocking shapes. We vary the percentage of, of polymers in the mixture. One of them is going to be a preferential shrinking material, so we we'll want to crystallize and shrink and squeeze the other material. The combination of the two is what makes Tom's plastic lumber strong enough to hold a 10-ton truck. It can withstand a very high load for the amount of weight of material that it is. The fact that the plastic lumber may outlast a wooden item by maybe 10 times makes it a huge advantage to use recycled plastic as opposed to wood. Only God can make a tree, but we can make plastic lumber as long as we want. But before plastic can be recycled into anything else, it has to get collected,